Mr. Malik, is there a possibility of uh, placing a moral compass uh, in the center of the politics in Pakistan and for that matter anywhere because you can't see things in black and white as Fahad has pointed out. There are certain objective realities of Pakistan's politics. Uh, establishment is a major stakeholder. We all know the background that has been happening since 2013 and 2018. The way things have transpired, we have come to agree to this point that you have to sit on one table and talk about stuff. How do you look at this current statement from Shahyar Afridi that he is going to only talk to the establishment and not the political stakeholders? It's not a statement, it's a desire. Uh, let, let's be very clear. I have the highest respect for Shandana, and especially she's gone personal hardship. She's been incarcerated, everything, and she stood her ground. She's done a... a much handled much better than a lot of men in, in, in the party and top leaders so all, all, all praise to her for that but, but I think they need to get, make few things clear for themselves uh, the PTI people they need to first understand or make it make a policy statement do they think army is part of the solution or part of the problem because when they're not in power it seems to be part of the problem when they are uh, uh, in power it's part of solution so I see a duplicity over here Khan Sahib used to say, you know, I got my bills passed by getting the army in, I used to do this, we were on the same page, they used to boast about it. Then uh, Shandana just said, you know, Biden did it on the behest of um, Bajwa and the whole conspiracy. This conspiracy has been flip-flopped, I think, I don't know, more times than I can remember. I don't, I don't even remember now, did the Americans tell Bajwa, did the Bajwa tell the Americans, did Pakistan did this, or what Imran Khan said. So there's a constant flip-flop on that. Let's, let's get out of that. Get out of that. What I liked about PTI when it came to politics was a very strong moral high ground that Imran used to um, claim, and we loved it. Unfortunately, we, yeah, we have yet to see its implementation. There are some red lines always, Zunera, there are always some red lines. When you're talking about a democratic culture, there is a red line about you talking to what you call unconstitutional and undemocratic involvement of the army. I would like to ask the PTI leadership, under what rule, under what law, either constitutional, either legal, or any morality, what, under what guise would you talk directly with DGISI and uh, chief of the army staff? If they talk to you on politics, they are violating the article. They, they should be tried under Article 6. If you're doing that, you're doing the same thing. First of all, please give me the legal and the constitutional and the moral justification for doing so. Mm -hmm. I understand there are ground realities. I think the biggest mistake that PTI is making is trying to sit in a silo and force the army to talk to them. If they will talk to the, if they were to talk to whatever form of government is sitting there, People's Party, uh, PMLN, and all that, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Shandana a direct question. If she was the army chief and she found out that Imran Khan had told his people, all right, guys, talk to P uh, PMLN, talk to Bolana Saab, talk to uh, People's Party, and let's form a joint policy on how to deal with uh, extra democratic interference and blah, blah, blah. Would the army feel more pressure then? Or Imran Khan sitting in jail mm -hmm. and just shouting about it, I don't want to talk to anybody, I'll talk to you directly. And they don't have to talk to him directly. Power talks to power from a position of weakness. Right now, Imran Khan's popularity is at an all-time high. But the establishment is not going to contest any elections against them. They don't need to be popular. They just need to be powerful. It's as simple as that. And I think, and I've been saying it in my shows, the, the conversation these guys want to have, they'll probably, probably their best hope is when the establishment sees that it cannot hold Khan any longer inside prison, when all the legal options have failed, maybe, maybe, just maybe, at that time, we might see some backdoor negotiations opening up. Before that, I do not get this policy. All like right. you pointed out earlier, you hold them responsible for these assemblies, you are part of those assemblies. Mm -hmm. You hold them appointing the same speaker, you've took, taken oath before that speaker. You can't, you can't run with hare and hunt with the hound. It doesn't work that way. You either, if you talk about ground realities, then ground reality is about talking with other political parties and forming a joint thing. Look at the Charter of Democracy. Yeah, I was Look about how to when point People's that out. Party and PMLN united. Yeah. When they united, they got a totally different outcome.
political outcome. You cannot be in a silo and expect the whole world to fall into that silo. Yeah. You so. have to interact and you have to do things in stages. My way or the highway did not work for them when they were in power. I don't think it's going to work for them when they're in opposition also. Well, thank you so much, Shandana Gulzar, for joining us today.